Hey everybody, today we're going to be building this sealed Ultimax 18. There's a lot to talk about, there's a lot to do, it's going to be a lot of fun, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Next, let's go ahead and jump over to Parts Express website. You can see here I've got it pulled up, we're looking at the 18 inch Ultimax. This is going to be the dual 2 ohm coil. Got a thousand watts of RMS power handling. Go ahead and scroll down here and look at our TS parameters here. See, we've got a really low resonant frequency, about 26 hertz. We've got 22 millimeters of linear excursion. That's how far we can travel while staying linear. There is more Xmax than that. Um, there is more travel than that, but this is our linear Xmax. We're going to go sealed today, and that's going to be at four and a half cubic feet. We're going to get really close to this 33 hertz F3. Next, let's jump into SketchUp where I've already made a drawing of our cabinet here. So we're gonna do a double baffle enclosure and we're gonna do it recessed. This is all gonna be built using three quarter inch MDF. And then we're gonna use a center brace. You can see we've got our double baffle there. Our front baffle is gonna cover all of our butt joints and we're gonna hide those on the side. You can see we've got our cutout for our terminal cup there. It's going to be a really simple, clean build. We're going to do a 3 8 roundover on all of our corners here. Let's go ahead and get cutting some wood here. We've got the Craig track out. I'm going to go ahead and label all those. Then we're going to go ahead and start our glue up. I'm going to run a solid bead down every joint. Get that spread out with a brush. Clamp down. I'm going to start shooting some nails. I'm using plenty of glue here. I'm moving nice and slow, clamping between each move getting all that space out of our joints. We want to prevent any leakage. Especially in a sealed enclosure, it's very important that we've got really tight joints. This is the first time I've ever used a brush to spread glue out. A little old fashioned, I like to use the finger. It's the most efficient for me, but um, the brush worked all right. I don't have any complaints. I'm using inch and a half brads here to really get some bite into the pieces. Each time I attach a panel, I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue to the joint and it's really gonna soak that up and help strengthen that joint. I'm gonna go ahead and get working on our brace here. Sealed, it's not really necessary to have good airflow like it is in a vented enclosure, but I'm going to go ahead and drill with a paddle bit. We're going to go ahead and get this brace installed. We're going to mark out so we know where to shoot. We don't have any missed nails. Nice and straight. Glue that up real nice. Plenty of glue, don't want any rattling, any panel resonance. After we slide this in, we're going to knock it into place and get it lined up and we're going to go ahead and shoot some nails. Again, gonna go ahead and spread some glue over all of our joints using my trusty little brush here once again. Do the same thing to the other side. Get 
that spread out one more time. After that, with the baffle off, I'm gonna go ahead and start to fill some of these holes. You don't have to do this in any particular order. You can attach the baffle and then fill everything. That's probably the easier way to do it. I'm using plastic wood to fill all these. You can see here, this is a real quick and dirty job. I'm just getting into these joints that we're gonna sand down later. This does not need to be smoothed and feathered out right at this point. This is a first draft. Filling in all those nail holes. As we're gonna do a painted finish. We don't want anything coming through. I'm gonna leave them oversized and then I'm gonna sand down later. That way we don't have any shrinkage, anything like that. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and start to mark out our center point here. I'm gonna actually drill through the center of both of my pieces so that the alignment stays precise. And then we're gonna to begin to route out our cutout Taking it nice and slow, making several passes. I don't want to bog the router down and I want a nice clean cut edge. I don't want any bumps. We're gonna do the same thing for both pieces, taking it nice and slow, take our time, get a nice clean cut using a straight cut bit here. Always wear a mask, this stuff is really toxic and it's, routing creates a ton of dust. We're going to go ahead and do a dry fit here just to make sure. Go ahead and test our second baffle. Everything fits nice and clean. Looking good so far. We've got a really nice tight fit here. Really nice clean edges. Next up, we're going to go ahead and start to glue our front baffles on. Again, we're using plenty of glue. We want a nice, really strong joint here gluing onto the braces as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get those centered up, drive in some nails. I'm gonna use a ton of glue to attach the second baffle. Get it all nice and spread out here. We're gonna line that up and then we're gonna shoot it down. Shoot as many nails as you need. You want this to be a really strong lamination. We're gonna fill all these anyway, so go ahead and shoot it up. Repeat the same step here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start our finishing process. We're gonna start rough sanding. You can see here, I'm just kind of marking out all my high spots just to make things a little bit easier. It's been over 100 in Texas every day this week, so I wanna do this as quickly and efficiently as humanly possible. Again, I'm wearing a mask here. This dust is very toxic. After I do a first rough sand, I'm gonna come in and fill all my joints one more time. Sand those back down till we got a really nice smooth finish here. Reminder, we're gonna be painting this so we, anything that comes through is going to look even worse once we get a coat of paint on it. So we want to get everything worked out right now. Next, we're going to go ahead and break our router back out. We're going to put a 3 8 round over on our front baffle. This is going to give us a really nice recessed clean look. Taking our time, moving nice and slow here, letting the router do the work. I'm gonna go ahead and sand that down by hand, get out any little lines you can see. Then we're gonna go ahead and start to route off our corners. Again, this is the same 3 8 roundover that I'm using here. Moving nice and slow, take your time.
Next up, we're gonna go ahead and cut our terminal cup. This is gonna be about a two inch diameter, really simple clean cut. Our next step here is gonna to be to coat this in a couple different coats of kills. We're gonna do some medium heavy coats here both times and sand between each coat. We want really good adhesion. This is gonna help seal the MDF for helping our spray paint adhere. This is absolutely necessary. This is a must do step. I'm gonna take some 400 grit and knock this primer down until it's nice and glass smooth. And then we're gonna hit it with one more coat. All right, moving on to the fun part. Let's get to painting. I'm using Bayer Lunar Surface here. This is a gloss finish. I find that it's not actually too glossy in person. It's just about the right amount. I'd call it semi-gloss. Do a nice even passes here, a little bit of overlap, good coverage, taking our time. You want a very well ventilated area if you're gonna be using spray paint. Same thing on every side, we're just making nice even passes, keeping the can a good distance away. We don't want really heavy coats that are going to flake off later or run. We're just doing nice light passes with a good amount of overlap. I'm going to go ahead and sand that down after it's dry for a couple days. We want this thing glass smooth, don't want to see any of our joints. Go ahead and take your time, sand down everything, use your eyes and your hands. Your hands are going to really tell the story. After you've got it all sanded down and you're sure it's nice and smooth, we're going to go ahead and do a couple more coats. Using the same technique, keeping it about a foot away. Nice, even, light coats here. Good overlap. corners nice and coated that's really what's going to pop on this enclosure with those roundovers this gloss paint is going to really sparkle on those corners next step i'm going to go ahead and do some pilots and then get our terminal cup installed make sure it's got some gasketing we're gonna go ahead and pilot for the T-nuts on our woofer here. I'm gonna start with a smaller pilot and then move to the full size for the T-nut. This is much easier with the woofer reversed. After that, we're gonna go ahead and drill our full size holes. I'm gonna use the fastener itself to pull the T-nut through just like this. Just make sure that it's all the way seated. We don't wanna use screws for this. We want a really nice strong hold. After that, I'm going to go ahead and paint the reveal black. This is going to hide any white that pokes through and makes the woofer look misaligned. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and attach some feet. Don't want this thing jostling around. It will move under its own power. Then we're going to go ahead and get her wired up. Watch those fingers, drop it into place, and get it lined up. 
After that, we're gonna go ahead and get it fastened down, flip her over, and there she is. Go ahead and get it wired up. I'm using 12 gauge for this. So overall, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I don't use sealed subwoofers very often. I've got four subwoofers right now and they're all vented. Um, I've had this Ultimax laying around for about a year at this point, and I think this was the perfect project for it. It's the perfect candidate. It's got so much power and so much excursion that even in a sealed enclosure, it still has so much output. And I've got to say, I had this in a vented enclosure previously, and this just sounds much cleaner. It won't dig quite as low, but I think for two-channel hi-fi and home theater, this is still a really valid candidate for an enclosure. The Ultimax is getting up there in price. It used to be a lot more affordable. It used to be a really, really good value, but they've gone up in price, so there are gonna be some trade-offs. If I didn't have this one laying around, I'm not certain this is gonna be something I would have purchased to build, but now that it's all done, I've gotta say I'm really shocked. I'm really, really happy with this. I think it looks great. You could take this one step further if you're going to be moving this around or using it as a coffee table and put some polyurethane on it. I'll say that I did attempt to do one coat of poly using Bayer's polyurethane, the oil-based, and the amber was just much too obvious on here. It really clashed with this white paint. This coat is called Lunar Surface, and it, I would call it somewhere between a gray and an off-white and the amber just really clashed with it. So I've left it alone. That's okay, this Bayer paint is extremely resilient, very much scratch resistant, and with a good coat of primer, the adhesion is really good too. I've never had any trouble with this, and I've used it a lot in the past on different projects. Here I'm playing Thanks to You by Boz Skaggs, and you can see from what little you can tell from the camera, the excursion is pretty crazy. In person, it's obviously much more than the camera picks up, and yes, you can feel it. It's vibrating everything in this room. Just a really, really deep and clean sound coming out of this thing. Much more than I would have personally expected from a sealed enclosure. They have a really bad wrap, but when you have this much cone surface area, it really becomes irrelevant. So everybody that's made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. It means a lot. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. There's going to be a ton of projects coming in the future. I mentioned in the first video that I'm going to be building all of the kits, and that is still true. Unfortunately, it's really difficult. Almost every kit across all sites are sold out, so in the meantime, I'm going to get really creative. I've got a measurement mic and a DATS unit. We're going to do some tests with those, play around with some different things, and do some measurements on some woofers and some bookshelves that I've already got built and just see how they compare. Um, in the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.